Good morning and welcome to my channel History with Hansa. Uh, I have come up today with the Marxist theories of imperialism. If you have been following my video, you must be knowing that uh, uh, I have started a series on imperialism and colonialism with special reference to India in which uh, I had said that the first uh, three uh, lectures or the first three videos will be on the different theories of imperialism. So we have already dealt with the liberal theories of imperialism and today we are going to talk about the Marxist theories of imperialism. So today we are going to talk about the theories of imperialism, the Marxist theories. Now, um, as we have been doing uh, before, uh, before beginning with what the Marxist theories of imperialism are all about, we need to see who the main protagonists are, who are the main historians who have developed the classical Marxist theory. Now, classical Marxist theory uh, basically became popular in uh, the first half of the 20th century, particularly the first two uh, decades of the 20th century. And... Uh, it is very important to have an understanding of the Marxist theories so that we fully understand what imperialism is about, what why, why certain uh, countries colonize other countries. Now, in uh, the lecture on uh, or the video on the liberal theories of imperialism, we had talked about Hobson, uh, Schumpeter, Charles Conant, Max Weber, and Thorstein Webin, and how they have. Uh, uh, established uh, the link between capitalism and imperialism while we saw that Hobson was an underconsumptionist and how he developed how, how he linked capitalism with imperialism and how Schumpeter said that there was no link between capitalism and imperialism in a similar manner we are going to deal today with the different uh, historians who have dealt with the classical Marxist theories so the main protagonists are Rosa Luxemburg Rudolf Hilferding, Nikolai Bukharin, and V.I. Lenin. But before we start beginning, uh, but before we start uh, to uh, uh, discuss the main protagonists and what their theories are about, since we are discussing the Marxist theories, it is very essential to understand Marx. It is very essential to understand what Marx has said about uh, capitalism and uh, imperialism and it is on the basis of what Karl Marx said that these historians these protagonists developed their own theories so let us begin what Marx understands by imperialism okay so Karl Marx uh, he talks about the primitive accumulation of capital primitive accumulation of capital is the main uh, highlighting point of Marx's theory. Now, what is primitive accumulation of capital all about? Marx says that capitalism is a relation between a class of propertyless workers and a class of private owners of means of production. So he says that uh, in a capitalist society, there are basically two classes. One class is the class of the propertyless free workers, free workers who have no property at all. And there is another class which uh, is uh, holding the means of production. The means of production are concentrated in their hands. Now, Marx goes on to describe and he says that by expelling the peasants from land, the means of production were concentrated in the hands of the landlord and the expelled peasant became a proletariat. So the separation of uh, activities created markets. Now, uh, what we have to understand is that because of these things, the social relations of production uh, were completely um, reorganized. Previously, production was for direct use and now production is for sale, sale in the market. So earlier, what was produced was directly consumed. It was for direct consumption. But now what is produced is for sale in the market so that um, uh, profit comes back to the capitalist class. So this he calls uh, the primitive uh, uh, accumulation of capital because 
the means of production and labor power that were not previously part of capital are transformed into capital so this is how he explains his primitive accumulation of capital the means of production and labor power that were previously not part of capital are now transformed into capital now uh, marx was basically not an underconsumptionist uh, like hobson but uh, in certain areas he does accept uh, the relation between capitalism and imperialism now how does he establish this relationship between capitalism and imperialism he says capitalism expands and draws all societies into its orbit uh, let us see how it is linked with imperialism marx says that uh, competition forces capitalist firms to expand by seeking markets and cheap raw materials and fresh supplies of labor force so uh, marx says that uh, competitive pressure uh, forces the capitalist firms to expand for a number of reasons for example they have to seek markets for getting the best price for their surplus produce then they have to acquire uh, cheap raw materials then they have to uh, uh, then they have to acquire uh, labor force cheap labor force another thing is that there is though there is no inevitable shortage of demand but there is equally no guarantee that demand will always be adequate because capitalist uh, economies uh, face both booms and slumps so there is always a possibility that is that there is enough uh, supply of uh, um, uh, goods uh, and therefore se uh, the sellers are seeking for fresh markets so markets are always in demand as i said the demand it is not necessary that demand will always be adequate and that whatever is consumed at home is 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 uh, fully uh, whatever is produced at home is consumed fully at home itself so this is how marx develops his uh, theory of capitalism and marx goes on to say that um, uh, in fact he cites the example of england and he says that england was the first country to industrialize and to grow uh, or to produce cotton textiles through industrial uh, methods as there was demand for uh, markets and uh, cotton goods uh, as well and that is why perhaps uh, marx says that england was the first country to uh, industrialize so so this is uh, how uh, marx has developed the concept of uh, uh imperialism basically uh talking about capitalism and i as i said before he's not basically an under consumptionist but he does draw a relationship between capitalism and imperialism in certain areas now uh, let us see how the different protagonists of uh, uh the marxist theory of uh, imperialism has have, have analyzed marx and how they have put their own uh, theories so the first one is rosa luxemburg Uh, the seminal work of rosa luxemburg was uh, accumulation of capital now uh, rosa luxemburg basically puts forward two arguments the first argument is that capitalism grows in a world where it is surrounded by pre capitalist economic formations okay so this is the main argument she says capitalism grows in a world where it is surrounded by pre capitalist economic formations now competitive uh, pressures or competition it forces capitalist economies to trade with these outside economies and therefore capitalism uh, develops because capitalism expands into its non capitalist uh, environment and ultimately swallows it up that is it conquers Uh, all the pre-capitalist formations so the argument is that since capitalism emerges in an environment which is surrounded by pre-capitalist formations it trades with these economies and then while trading with these economies it ultimately swallows it up that is completely swallows it up which means that it conquers these territories so this is the first argument developed by rosa luxemburg the second argument uh, okay as we have seen already capitalism expands into its non capitalist environment and ultimately swallows it up that is conquers them okay now the second argument of rosa luxemburg the second argument is that capitalist economies cannot function in isolation uh, 
it is not possible for capitalist economies to function in isolation why because they need uh, uh, cheap raw materials constant capital for investment and labor power and because there is a need for cheap raw materials because there is a need for constant capital for investment and because there is a need for labor power so Uh, naturally the capitalist economies uh, try to find uh, areas all over the world where uh, uh, they can get these things and in this process they also sometimes use force so now what happens that for acquiring labor power and for seizing the means of production uh, capitalist economies expand and they adopt imperialism so these are the two arguments of rose alexander the first argument is that capitalism swallows up uh, the non capitalist economies uh, which it is surrounded by and the second one is that capitalist economies cannot function in isolation because they need so many things which they can get out get only from colonies so they need to uh, colonize they need to adopt imperialism now let us move on to uh, the next protagonists uh, which is okay uh so we have seen this uh the next protagonist is rudolf hilferding okay now uh, uh rudolf hilferding's book was called the finance capital and uh uh rudolf hilferding was a major classical marxist theorist who said or who was concerned with internal development of advanced capitalist countries now rudolf hilferding um he talks about the centralization of capital and he says that the centralization of capital uh, creates uh, or leads to the concentration of economic power and production which leads to the creation of monopoly in the market now rudolf hilferding he cites the example of certain big capitalist nations like germany and some countries in central europe and um, he uh, at the same time also emphasizes the role of banks and uh, uh, what the what banks uh, what role the banks have to play in the growth of uh, monopoly okay now second argument of rudolf hilferding he links imperialism with the growth of monopoly capitalism because imperial expansion becomes essential for monopoly capitalists for bringing new areas under their jurisdiction okay now he is talking about the creation of monopoly in the market and therefore he is linking uh, imperialism with monopoly capitalism imperial expansion becomes important for monopoly capitalists because they have to bring under their jurisdiction certain areas uh, which uh, certain areas which uh, 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 have to be brought under their control in order to get cheap raw materials in order to get uh, fresh uh, um uh, supplies of labor force in order to get markets for selling their produce so this is how he links imperialism with the growth of monopoly capitalism so first thing he talks about the creation of monopoly in the market and second thing he links monopoly capitalism with imperialism this is how he explains his economic uh, theory or this is how he explains his uh, theory okay now uh, let us move on to the next important uh, marxist uh, theorist which is uh, okay it is nikolai bukharin we have uh, uh, talked about uh, nikolai bukharin in great detail when i was doing my russian history series uh, okay let me tell you at this point there is uh, another series uh, which uh, i have already completed it is on uh, russian history if you wish you can uh, go back to that series and watch certain major aspects of russian history so nikolai bukharin was a major figure in uh, the history of russia and uh, he was also a very famous classical marxist theorist so his book is called imperialism and world economy okay now imperialism is a policy of finance capitalism imperialism is an ideology so uh, bukharin basically considers um, imperialism to be an uh, ideology and the important thing about bukharin is that he uh, combines uh, various analysis for example uh, he combines the concept of the internationalization of capitalist relations of production with uh, the analysis of formation of blocks of finance capital now here uh, uh, it is uh, worthy noticing 
that the concept of the internationalization of uh, capitalist relations of production came from Marx and Luxembourg. Uh, this is what Marx uh, has talked about and this is what uh, Rosa Luxembourg has expanded. And the concept of the formation of blocks of finance capital has been taken from Hilferding. So he combines these two analysis of uh, Marx and Luxembourg and Hilferding uh, respectively and then he develops his own theory of capitalism and uh, he says that uh, competitive struggle uh, or uh, competitive uh, forces uh, continue in the uh, era of finance capital and now it takes the form of uh, military and political rivalry between state capitalist trusts. So this is how Bukharin develops his theory of um, imperialism. Okay now the next or the last important uh, theorist we have is Lenin. Lenin was the main personality behind the Russian Revolution of 1917. And in fact, until his death in uh, 1924, he continued to be a very dominant figure, or we can say the most dominant figure in Russian uh, history. When Russia saw the different phases of war communism and when uh, uh, Lenin was a seminal personality in bringing about the new economic policy in 1921. So uh, Lenin also based his theories on uh, 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 the basic uh, theory of uh, Marx, which is primitive accumulation of capital and what he talks about capitalism and how capitalism expands and what is the need for capitalism to expand. Now, uh, Lenin's book is very famous. Lenin's book uh, is, called the imp is called Imperialism, the Highest Stage of Capitalism. Now, by the very name of the book, Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, you can understand that Lenin is trying to link uh, capitalism, imperialism with capitalism. And he says that when capitalism grows up to the extreme level, it is necessary for capitalist economies to uh, adopt imperialism as a basic policy uh, matter. Now, this book, Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, this book was written in Zurich in 1916. Uh, in the middle of the carnage of the First World War and on the eve of the uh, Russian Revolution, uh, which took place in 1917. Now, through this book, Lenin has uh, tried to show that the First World War was imperialist uh, by uh, nature. Now, uh, uh, Lenin, uh, he develops his uh, theory of capitalism by uh, drawing a uh, various uh, concepts from uh, different uh, Marxist theorists. For example, uh, he draws the concept of uh, uh, or he develops a critique of capitalism and the desire for socialism. Now you can very well understand from where this concept has come. Uh, develops a critique of capitalism and the desire for socialism. This basically comes from Marx. Marx, uh, Marx uh, criticizes uh, capitalism to the extreme and in fact he says that capitalism has in itself inherent elements of contradiction and uh, that uh, one day it will come to an end when the workers will revolt and all these things. So uh, first of all Lenin develops a critique of capitalism and the desire for socialism from Marx. <coughs> Excuse me. Now uh, next Lenin emphasizes the importance of finance capital. Uh, now, as already seen, the concept of uh, finance capital has been developed by Hilferding. So, uh, Lenin borrows this concept from Hilferding. Now, under consumption theory, as you might remember from my video on liberal theory of imperialism, Hobson was an under consumptionist, and Lenin borrows this uh, under consumption theory from Hobson. So we find that Lenin's theory is a mixture of uh, the various theories put forward by various classical Marxists. From Marx, he borrows the critique of capitalism and the desire for socialism. From Rudolf Helferding, he uh, emphasizes the importance of finance capital. And from Hobson, he borrows the underconsumption theory. I hope you remember what underconsumption is about. I have already explained it. I'll explain, explain it once more. Underconsumption is that... Uh, uh, what if uh, that whatever is uh, produced in a capitalist economy, if it is consumed at home itself, then imperialism would not emerge. Because for consumption at home, 
the consumer standard of consumption should be high and if this is not high then uh, foreign markets will be needed for uh, uh, selling uh, the surplus produce so lenin built up his theory by uh, basing his theory upon a number of classical marxist theories uh, now an important quote of lenin is imperialism emerges as the development and the direct continuation of the fundamental characteristics of capitalism in general so uh, once again i would uh, uh, take you back to uh, the title of his book imperialism the highest stage of capitalism and when the and and he and emphasizing this very point he says that when capitalism develops to its extreme then the need for colonies is the dire necessity of capitalist economies again for uh, acquiring cheap raw materials for investing capital for uh, uh, cheap labor force for selling its surplus produce in the market so this is how uh, uh, lenin uh, uh, talks about imperialism and finally he says that imperialism makes war inevitable and because of the threat of war workers could not gain from monopolistic privilege now as uh, rosa luxemburg had also uh, analyzed and as uh, later on bukharin also did uh, marx also did that uh, it it becomes necessary at a certain point of time that if you are looking for cheap raw materials and uh, markets for your surplus produce all over the world at some point of time the capitalist economies use force and once you use force uh, and you conquer these nations then uh, naturally uh, Uh, this is what you call adopting imperialism so capitalism in this way uh, leads to imperialism or what is the highest the highest stage of capitalism according to uh, lenin is imperialism so this is all uh, about the marxist theories of imperialism and uh, uh, we have uh discussed so many theorists so many protagonists uh, today and i told you that their basic uh, ideas or the basic theories are based on the theory of marx so we saw marx first what marx has to say about capitalism and uh, imperialism and uh, then we saw uh, rosa luxemburg rodolf helperding uh, nikolai bukharin and vladimir ilich uh, uh, lenin so uh, this is what the marxist theory is about uh let me uh, also briefly tell you about uh, what my next video is going to be about uh, as uh, i had done this experiment with the liberal theories of imperialism i had put up a question and answer uh, session or a question and answer video with you so i'm going to do the same thing with marxist theories of imperialism i'll be coming up with my uh, uh next video on questions and answers on the marxist theories of imperialism uh you can uh, test yourself uh by answering these questions and then uh, you can assess or you can make your own assessment how much you have understood the marxist theories of imperialism uh i hope uh, this question and answer series uh, helps you and uh, you are able to better understand them So uh if you like my video please share it and please subscribe it also and also write in the comment box uh, what uh, good you found about my video and which point you did not uh, understand so that in my next video sometime uh, 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 in uh, my next video i will be able to clear your uh, doubts so please free, uh, feel free to comment and also to like my video so that is all for today please prepare yourself please uh, watch this video carefully and prepare yourself for my next video on the questions and answers on the marxist theories of imperialism so this is all for today uh, see you in my next video thank you so much